<laughs> Welcome back to another round of Battle Hard in Manila. Here we fight our uh, commentating on a fight between D Max and JR, both of which are running Reinar. So here Neil, let's see how well you know the new heavy hitters cards for Brute. <clears throat> so I believe there should not there should be <clears throat> just a few new cards for Reinar. But what's interesting here is D Max is running ball breakers for his other weapon and yeah. not just two mana book ones. Now let's see what JR is running. I think this, this is going to be a very fun matchup because yeah. fighting Bruce is always just swing big or go big or go home. Exactly. I think with matchups. <laughs> So let's see what weapon JR has. Once JR still hasn't revealed his equipment. What if he runs? Okay, here looks like he's running both Mandible Claws. While well, Dmax is running a more unique setup with one Mandible Claw and one Ball Break. I wonder what Dmax is cooking over here. Noticeably, you can see the, uh, both, both are using the new Heavy Hitter's arms. Oh yeah. I believe that's a very strong arm. Gives you block value and the might. It's very good. Let's see who goes first. Looks like DMAX is contemplating. On this turn. That's a nice name, uh, DMAX. Yeah, it's like. Doesn't doesn't have to be. I wonder anymore. why he's not playing Max Nitro. That's our first corny joke of the stream. Sorry, guys. The, the only corny joke we'll have. What these guys are gonna play? D Max contemplating very well on what his turn, first turn is going to be. Starting off with the barraging beatdown. See. How they will decide on intimidate. Okay. And first of many intimidates of this this round. So we match a suit with his options. See what he can play here. If he snags two more intimidates. This attack will be very pink. Oh, here, a Massacre. What does Massacre do, Neil? I also have no idea. I but... also have no idea. So, uh, what, I, what I know for sure is it's going in for 9 damage. A very... Well, if he blocks with 2 cards, I believe it will shrink down. If he blocks with 2 cards, it will shrink down back to a 6. Hopefully, JR does not have a non-block so that you can fully cover this let's see so given that it's an alpha uh, it's an alpha rampage going uh massacre going for nine then that means the barraging beatdown is a red yes it's a red barraging JR deciding on which card to give up for the, for the block. Okay, blocks with two cards, they should shrink the barraging beat down. And, and that's a full block. Shot. No damage has been taken. And now it's JR's turn to start the assault on D Max. So let's see what kind of offense JR can push. Also, I would, I would be interesting to see what the new heavy hitter card sent packing. The brute li the CNC like brute card, which costs three, uh, attacks for six, banishes your arsenal, and you can only get your arsenal back if you fully block the damage. I believe that card is extremely strong. Not only because it interrupts your arsenal, but also it keeps your arsenal clear for when it 
for if you do block with two cards, uh, making sure that you don't take any damage from that card, you'll still be left with an empty arsenal. Although the banished card will go back to your hand. I think this is the new brute card. Show no mercy. Show no mercy. So it will only have a buff if there are no cards in hand. So the buff will happen if the the person blocking has no uh, card in hand. So for right now, it's only attacking for six. If Vmax actually throws it down his whole hand, it would go up. Oh, and it okay. seems like D-Max chooses to just block with arms and a beast with him. Arms it's chest and beast with him. Generating a win. An interesting block coming from D-Max and this gives me the feeling that he might have a power turn, power turn coming in for this turn. So let's see what D-Max has on the return. Picking up the bat hard from Banish. And it oh, seems to be a roll for scab skin. So let's see what he was able to roll. He was rolling a six. Looks like that dice roller is broken. It only rolls sixes. And with three action points available, let's see what D Max is able to pull off. J uh, D Max is in a very good position with three extra action points. Let's see on the amount of cards he's able to throw. Oh, he seems to be rolling it again. For what? Ooh, there seems to be another six, but I'm not sure. Oh, he's. he's oh, wait popping. a minute. He has, he has rolled double sixes on his chest and his scams and now he has three resources and three action points oh my god dude. you can only see jr's dismay as he's going to face a very big turn from Dmax. i believe that dice roller only rolls sixes neil what do you think i think that dice roller is too op <laughs> here's a one he's coming in with a uh that's an old card i believe an additional cost discarded card that's going one for eight i believe one for nine because of the the might token yes and oh, sorry one for seven and just plus one from the might so one for eight ah one for eight i think that's uh well it's only for seven because it's a yellow ah i see the red one's attack for seven oh so here interesting uh, the claws are the claws turned on and the ball breakers turned on since he he discarded the card and the discarded card seems to be skull crack so now he's back to three resources yes so even though the max was able to roll three action points i don't think he has enough resources to play everything let's see how jr wants to block it's for seven the great thing about fighting a brute is that I don't think you need to think about on hits when you're fighting them. Oh, but now they have sent back. In. Oh, that's true. I think that's the new relevant on hit that people should be worried about. So here it looks like JR is uh, offering up his armor and a swing big, fully covering that seven attack. He should be able to generate a might to. Yep, he is just confirming the amount of damage he wants to take. He decides to decline blocking with the scabs. So I think he is happy just presenting a five. And here, JR is taking. Three damage? Two damage. Two damage. And going down to 18. I don't Beam. think he has taken the damage yet. Oh, uh, they're still in the defense the thing. Dmax seems to contemplate on whether he'll do a reaction. Does he have Pummel? 
No way, that's fumble. Oh no, you can't fumble that. It's only one cost. Yeah, no way, that's fumble. Oh, there. He's he decided... decided to block with the flash, the scowling flash bag, which forces VMAX to intimidate. And generating a my token. Yes, as well. So here, JR does not take any damage and banishes the last card in him. So this last attack is swing big. It's coming in 4 8. But although DMAX rolled both sixes on his chest and his scabs, DMAX only presented a 15 damage turn, which is not so absurd. JR goes down to 15. It's a very effective use of Scaling Flesh Bag there, preventing for another big swing from a different attack. Yes. Oh, he set a Blood Rush Bell. Yes, it is. And he seems to have discarded a Massacre, which guarantees that he will get a Intimidate Trigger, two cards, and go again on Blood Rush Bellow. Here, he goes two cards. Let's see if he has enough resources to swing both Claws and the Attack from Mars. So here he starts out with the first Claw. This is coming in for six damage with go again. Oh, Sorry. Six. 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 It seems that JR forgot that he had a might token in store and the claw is supposed to be coming in for six go again. With D-Max taking all 6 damage, going to 14. So let's see if uh, JR has another blue in his hand so that he can swing his claw again. Or he'll attack with a... Whatever is uh, in his arsenal. Yeah, whatever is in his arsenal. JR contemplating on whether to give a claw for five or whatever is in his arsenal. Oh, this time he's trying to roll his own. Uh, yeah, let's see what he'll roll. So I'm not sure how many resources he rolled. Oh, he rolled a four. And so he's generating two, two, extra, two, extra two extra resources. Two extra resources. Sorry, that's the wrong card game again. Swing for five. Here, is he gonna swing for five? I think he's still contemplating if he's swinging for five, go again, or he's going for what seems to be a swing big from his hand. Let's see what he decides to pitch. Uh, let's see what she decides to pitch. This is a very intense showing of how Rhinar fighting against a Rhinar. It's really just about how big can you swing. How big can your blood rush below get? And in this case, JR has struck first with his own blood rush below. <clears throat> Seems like the decision on whether he'll use the mandible claw or the swing big from his hand it's taking some time. I'm just counting his, per his uh, optimus sequence. Or whatever it is in his arsenal. And it looks like that he's coming in with show no mercy. Show no mercy. Coming in for just six damage once more. Uh, I was going for eight, Neil. Uh, uh, for eight, Bellow. yeah, for eight damage. 
Um, fortunately, he's unable to get the second effect of that card since he still has two cards to block with. He will get the second effect with that card, Neil, since if he blocks with all of his cards, he has no cards in hand. But it seems like Mr. D-Max doesn't seem to want to have that effect. And he's blocking with... Oh, no! Yeah, he's blocking with armor and one card. It's like here, the total block of six. If he chooses to block with those cards... There's one from the arms, two from the head, and one, uh, three from uh, the card that he's blocking with. So let's see if uh, D-Max will be happy with this block. Or if he will be contemplating on another piece of armor or another card from him. So here, this, he decides to include the scab skins, completely covering the A damage. So it looks like they are just left with one card, which was intimidated and will be put into the arse. I think the reason why he chose to do that is because he was expecting D Max to use the head again, the headpiece, uh, Scalding Flesh Bag, to stop him from doing, uh, from using the Show No Mercy. Mm. And now the turn has been passed. With two cards and. Oh no, three cards. Yeah, two of the cards were intimidated. Let's see what kind of hand. Oh, it's like he's rolling scabs again. And let's see what the result was. I believe it was a break even. There was no excitement from either player. Yeah. Oh, it was just one action point. So just one action point. Very risky. Uh, very risky use of. Uh, Scab skin, especially now that there's no gambler's left to be in the out for one. Sorry, that is true. Right here, he's pitching a pulping to uh, wild ride. Play wild ride. No, no, I think he's oh, uh, no, it's not wild ride, he's discarding wild ride. Yes, no card seems to be. I don't, I can't tell from the footage here, but. Seems to be a 7 power attack, which cost him to discard a card. So let's see if uh, Jared would want to take this damage. I believe that has no goal again. Uh, as D-Max only rolled one action. So here D-Max is going to the think tank. JR is going to the think Sorry, tank. Sorry, JR is going to the think tank. Thinking if he should take that 7 damage, I don't think he's considering playing around Pummel. Do you think Brutes would run Pummel nowadays? Too? I've seen some Brutes run some Pummel, but I don't think this is going to have Pummel because it's a red... Uh, I think it's a red popping in the pitch, pitch mm -hmm. zone, so he won't be able to run Pummel. He won't be able to use Pummel in this one. Yep. Here, JR takes 7, he goes down to 8. It looks like it's a big turn coming up if he didn't decide to give cards. And here we have JR with the full grip coming in with a oh, Blood Rush Bellow. Another Blood Rush Bellow. So here. Oh, I need this card to six draws two. And intimidates D Max. So let's see if all of that damage that JR took was worth with this turn. A second blood rush bellow turn. Oh, 
He's starting us off with a mandible claw for five and go again. Or, or another take back. Let's see what JR has in store for the next. With this blood rush below turn here. So yeah, I think DMAX is clearly on the back foot since uh, he has played a total of zero Blood Rush Bellows. While JR on the other hand has played, this is already his second one, which puts him far ahead. However, if he doesn't manage to deal a lot of damage and take the tempo from DMAX in here, I think he'll be left at the very largest advantage knowing that he doesn't have another Blood Rush Bellows turn after this one. So he's coming in for five and go again. He's pitching what I think is a blue, a blue garaging bit. The max taking the claw, going down to seven. Let's see how much pain JR can give. It's a very daring no block coming from D Max. Especially given how Reiner is able to intimidate cards off of your hand. So if he doesn't, if he manages to intimidate his whole hand, then the only thing he has left for defense is his scab skin. And let's see what JR has. He's playing it from Arsenal. In a race face. In a race face. Just no for sticks. No pump from the Moraging Deep. Very interesting play coming in for from JR. So if D Max takes the hit here, he would go down to one, leaving him open for a reckless swing. I don't think it's in the best interest of D Max to not block. So let's see how D Max wants to block this card. He could decide to block with the scabs and go down to three, which is okay. That takes you out of reckless swing lane. He could also block with two cards, but then he might not be able to set enough damage to bring JR down to zero. But this is also interesting. If Harry's face does do damage to D Max, he'll also not be able to pump his own brute attacks from Raging, uh, from Blood Rush Bellows. Mm, that's a good point. So let's see. If Dmax if Dmax does not respect the effect, and it does seem that he has a blood rush bellows from his hand, then his blood rush bellows turn will also be moot, and he'll only be able to swing with his mandible claws, which won't be buffed by blood rush bellows. Coming in only for three would go again. It seems like uh, JR is uh, living with a three life buffer also. Two block from the scabs and one block from the arms. So let's see what the max will present. So I think D Max is thinking if he does take three or just oh there we go. He's taking the, the full four damage. A full four damage. And he's going to lose the ability to buff his attacks using Blood Rush Bellows. And now he's down to three left. So let's see how DMAX will navigate through this using a Blood Rush Bellow so it doesn't buff your Brute Attacks. If he's going to use it at all. And so he's using it. Blood Rush Bellows. Sparting cannot see what it was. However, it is a red. And he's using Scab Skin. Oh no, he's just using the dice tower to determine what to intimidate. It seems to be a 6 plus app since he draw his, drew his 2 and intimidated JR. Now he has to think very carefully of how he's going to navigate this turn because his, all of his attacks don't have the brute keyword or the brute class rather. Let's see if we can muster up enough damage. 
Just three from Claw. Uh, he could probably go Palping for the Dominate. To Dominate and the go again. And the Intimidate. So, looks like JR has three cards left. One has been dominated away. Let's see if he can block out this Bullet Dwarf turn from Demons. Nemax surely taking his time determining what to do in this weird situation of no brute class. Let's see what cards Nemax can throw. Nemax in the think tank thinking that this should if he would want to win this game, it should be this turn. Starting us off with the Mandible Claw for 3 and Go Again. Luckily for D-Max, the Go Again trigger doesn't mind what class the attack is. So he's still able to get the Go Again benefit from there. JR is taking 3, down to 5. So let's see. Oh, here's a Pulping. Pulping, also benefiting from the discarded 6 attack. Seems to be coming in for... Uh, with the pulping, uh, six dominate, six dominate and go again, and in this case he won't be able to stop the. Oh goal. no! It's a Barachi beatdown, and you see here he has no go again. Does not have go again. Unfortunate. Oh, no, just a six. What a turn of events for Dmax. I don't think this would be enough to finish the game. No, it has go again, but it doesn't have dominate. Oh, okay. so if he blocks with two cards here, then he's able to stop the go again. Okay, I see, I see. What a 50-50. He ate the mix-up. And this is why Reinar is always fun to play against. <laughs> you never know what you're going to run into. Now this is coming in for six go again with no dominate. Let's see if JR will block with two cards to stop and he seems to have not blocked with two cards. He is choosing to take the two damage and go down with three. JR contemplating on if he'll use whatever is hiding in that arsenal. No, he's not. He's blocking with the. With all of his armor. All his armor. Taking one? Yep, JR takes one. And using the last point of my token from the Apex Bonebreaker. Here looks like DMAX is closing the stern. Oh, so it doesn't, it really doesn't have go again. Yes. So now here. JR can crack back. Starting off with four seven. D-Max blocking with just the scab skins here. I believe he is already presenting the block so that he won't forget. Oh no, it's and, all non-blocks. No way. And there we have it. JR wins this round.
Unfortunately for D-Max, he does not have anything to block with. Uh, D-Max started off the game with crazy two six rows from the chest of his Gapskins. But JR caught up with two back-to-back -back barraging bellows. Back Sorry, not barraging bellows. What? Yeah, blood rush bellows. Blood rush bellows. So now the D-Max also unfortunately missed a couple of crucial discards, which uh, stopped his turn from getting too wide. So JR here took the win. And that will be round, th round four.